Good evening. It's 6.04 p.m. and I'm calling to order this workshop meeting of the City, uh, city of Kennedy City Council, March 30th, 2021. Um, I will now call roll and establish a quorum as present. Council Member Wynn? Here. Council Member Briones? Present. Council Member Stein? Here. Council Member Rodriguez? Here. Council Member Douglas? Here. All are present. We have a quorum this evening. If you will all join me in rising for a prayer. If Leslie, if you will lead us in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that you would watch over us and just continue to protect us and help us to make good decisions and growing and developing our city. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This brings us to item number five on the agenda, open workshop for the purpose of discussing and modifying adopted ordinance 21-04C, creating and establishing the Kennedy Fire Department as a volunteer fire department. Mr. Lindy, you have a presentation? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, uh, as you recall, at the meeting in March, we went ahead and we adopted this ordinance and established this volunteer fire department, but we did so as amended. So the workshop tonight is to provide the as amended part to the ordinance. So once we get all that language done, there will be no further action needed by the Council going forward. Mayor, be back. Thank you, Ms. Schoen. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak on, on anything? Uh, you're welcome to approach the microphone if you have anything to say about the ordinance. Have, has everyone had a chance to review the ordinance? And if anyone has anything to say at this time, you're welcome to. If not, we'll just enter into a discussion. It's less formal with a workshop, so if a, a question comes to you, just raise your hand and I can recognize you at the time. I got something. Yes, sir, please come forward. Doing? Uh, the only thing I got is about two years ago uh, with the previous manager, city attorney, and mayor, uh, they presented us with an ordinance and sort of agreement. And I was just here. I, I was wanting to know if, if I can hand it out to each of y'all just to look at maybe something other than the ordinance that he's presenting. Yeah, if you have a copy, I'd, I'd yeah, like I have a copy here. There. It's just an old ordinance that was presented to us that was uh, when we were doing that contract or whatever, this is something that they presented to us and it was just going back and forth and I just thought since it's the workshop, maybe it could be something to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Alessandra, did you get a copy of this? I'll open the floor for any comments or questions from the council members. For Ms. Gad, our legal, our, uh, for legal advice is here, our city attorney is here, or for Mr. Lynn, or from the fire department members themselves. If anybody has any questions, now's the time. Yes, uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. This appears to be the agreement that they were trying to establish that Mr. Ruiz gave me. This didn't establish them as a fire department. This was the actual agreement that was supposed to be between the city and the fire department for them to perform the duties, um, which is something we need to keep a hold of because after this gets signed and gets put in effect, we are going to have to come back and do this. It's separate from the ordinance. Yes, it's completely separate. But, um, there is an ordinance on the front part of it. Are you talking about the back part? Yes, it's an ordinance to adopt the, uh, the, the agreement, agreement is what it is. And we left the one that we never got. Right. This is the one y'all, this is the one that 
Mr. Rue has worked on, but we've never really got presented for you guys to do. And it's something that uh, I've looked over the actual agreement itself, and uh, I don't have any issues with the agreement per se. So once we get through this part of it, this will be something that we'll have to come back with an ordinance and adopt later. So. so the ordinance is just a draft ordinance that was never approved? Or no, sir. Okay. Any questions from the council or discussion? I, I have a few questions. Um, now that we've established the fire department as a volunteer fire department for the city of Kennedy, if they have, a, say, a legal question or something like that, similar to, say, if the Parks Board had a legal question, does our city attorney also represent them now? Yes. Okay. And then... Inside, like our packet that we got, section 38-4, uh, fire department established. It states, basically, um, it's talking about, you know, the citizens of the city of Kennedy. Do we need to add language in here that allows them to operate outside of the city limits? Like, if, for example, if there's a major fire in Fall City, Everybody's coming. Rungi, I mean, everybody's going to go. Uh, similar to when we had the fire here, and Beville showed up. Do we need to put specific language that allows that? That is something that we should add um, if it's desired you know, by the city and the department. Yes. Are we talking about an air local agreement? Would it take that form or something less formal? Um, I think it should be in this ordinance to start. And then if you know, there was something that we needed in the local agreement, uh, just out of necessity. Um, when it came to operating together as departments, that would be fine. But this would authorize them to be in the, you know, this would be the city authorizing them to take that action. Outside of the city. Because I know there's, I mean, yeah, it's getting hot. You know, brush fires are going to become a very common thing. And I don't, we don't typically see those within the city limits. Not to say it wouldn't happen, but, you know, they I know a that. Call outside yeah. the city limits. I just, want to, I just want to make sure that, you know, if there's something that we have to specifically <clears throat> put for that to be allowed, that we add that in. I'm sure you could, you could type that in. Absolutely. Well, when that happens, how, how do you handle it? Do you do it with fire chief to fire chief? Like, you and Charlie Malik coordinate, you know, well, or how, how does that? Well, the way it was is we've got all the south zone, most of the east zone, and up to the river. West zone and up to the river and the east zone, mm -hmm. and anything south of that, kind of from like actually from the hospital to this direction is what our territory was. Any any fire, any calls on that? But y'all communicate directly. We, well, yes, we we call another department for mutual aid, we, yeah. or vice versa. They call us. Yeah, we'll get to whoever department calls and our chief and, and communicate stuff. So. Well, we've been dispatched as far as that is close to county. And and even further spots, uh, you know, all over. And one of the brush trucks we did have with the wildland, you know, they had, that was part of the contract too, was that if we had that uh, wildland truck, that we were to be, if we were to get, to get called out, that truck would be called out. We would have to supply people with it. And any time that a fire truck moves, will the chief knows about it, you know, you the assistant chief, just all the time. Yeah, majority of everybody lets us know they either call us or send us a text or anything like that. And y'all are comfortable with us putting it in in here? Well, yeah, and then if we don't, that means we're city limit. That's it. We can't go and go outside the city limits. And that's where we get our the rural fire from. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the ones we're reimbursing for their taxes for a fire code. I have a question for the fire department. Um, you guys have you guys had concerns about this when we were trying to get it done. Now that you have reviewed it, do you have any other areas that you have found that you have some concerns with 
in the actual ordinance? There are some words in the actual ordinance that we were kind of concerned in the way they're being put. Um, well, like, for instance, like, uh, like what we did, and actually, these are just questions too, because like, I don't, I don't understand. Some, I mean, some of the stuff, I mean, I don't, some of us I do, but like, uh, where it says 38.4, this is hereby created and established. Like, we just got established, right? What does the created part mean? Like, I'm, I'm just asking, so. Essentially, what's happened here by this ordinance is now you're legally established within the city of Kennedy as a volunteer fire department. Yes, but. Before, you guys have just been a, a group of concerned citizens getting together, using city assets, taking care of the residents, okay? Um, which has been greatly appreciated. So, so is that like creating and established? Not creating and established? It's, like that's what, I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking on the words. Like is that creating and established or created and established? It's created just and the established. the way the like, legal language yeah. is used. It's okay. a common um, way to bridge those two words together okay. uh, in an agreement like this or an ordinance like this. So how is that going to affect all the years that we had in, in the department? It shouldn't affect them. Um, it's just pertaining to this establishment by ordinance of the fire department. But it won't take away from the years that you guys were operating. So if we've had members that have had 30 years or more than one year, that doesn't go away. No. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't that go away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. You know, Service time stays. Because you're volunteer. See, so, so, but your years don't go away. They don't, they don't go away. It is what it is. 30 years, yeah. you got 30 years. Yeah, but I mean, when y'all start using all these legal terms and all that, it's established, it means they just barely got created. No, just the, 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 this is on, on paper now. now it, 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 that's some stuff. That is established as a volunteer, which it had never been done before. Okay. But your years of service, they stay with you. They don't, they don't go away. So that, I mean, that was one of the big questions, too, because we had a couple guys with some, put, you know, some years in, and it's like, well, you know, if I get out, am I going to be able to do this since this wording says created? And established, but now that it's you know been recognized, we understand a little bit more. And that can be put in there too. That that to to uh, put something in there to say that their years of service go along with with their country. Yeah, couldn't you put that under thirty eight twelve, sure. where it says pension and disabilities? That way, they, yeah. we don't endanger them losing them. While we're on that sentence, I had a question. Um, it says known as the City of Kennedy Fire Department. I was wondering if that should be changed to Kennedy Volunteer Fire Department. Sure. Did, did, uh, yes. I yeah, did everyone agree with that? That was another yeah. question. No. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Do you have a question? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I just want to know on the top, what is, what are you meaning by prohibiting the hindrance of the fire department? Um, that would just be, that's actually something that uh, was open for discussion today, and that was kept in the caption, and I wasn't sure what the city would want. So this is basically relating to traffic things. Uh, so anyone, you know, if the fire, if the fire department has an emergency and the vehicles pull up, that would be a, a provision specifically stating that no one is to interfere with the authority of the fire department and their access in that emergency. So that language was leading to that. Um, I don't know if the city thinks it's something that they'd like to put in here and establish even like a criminal penalty for. I've seen that in other ordinances. So it was just leading to that. Okay. So that basically means that if there's a fire and they're doing what they should be doing and there's somebody that's in the way of that, they have the right to move that person or tell that person to leave and that person has to leave. Correct. And that okay. person could also, you know, potentially be fined um, and given a citation. If, right. if we were to create that penalty in the ordinance. Okay. So it's just meaning there's anybody hindering the fire department while they're acting in service. Yes. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. If we if we create that if we add that penalty into this, um, that would only apply within the city limits, right? Unless we had an interlocal agreement with the sheriff's office. Right, that would just be in the city limits. Okay, and another one I got. Um, finding of facts, a repealer, and proper notice of meeting. 
Like, what are you, what are you trying to get in the finding of facts? Those are just all um, standard language that we have to have in ordinances. So those are kind of, I want to say, boilerplate language that we have in almost all of our ordinances that make, um, that go into the legality of the ordinance as an instrument. And it's very general. It doesn't actually have to do too much with the fire department specifically. It's more about satisfying certain requirements um, under state law for how an ordinance takes effect. Uh, as well as, you know, the severability and the repealer, that would be if anything in this ordinance were found to be illegal or for whatever reason later on it was in conflict with something else. Um, that one thing could be removed, but the ordinance itself would still be good. The rest of it would still stand. I had another question about Section 38.6, about selection of officers. Um, city Council may from time to time determine, I believe currently the officers are chosen by vote by the fire department, is that correct? Yes. yes. Will this change that procedure or? We can completely, it's up to you know City Council what you want the procedure to be, so we can stick with the procedure. Um, that is in place uh, or go with something else. When I drafted this, it was kind of just to open up a discussion as to what we would want. I didn't know, you know what direction city council would go in or what your practices were already. Um, so with tonight's input, we can change those sorts of things if city council would like to or you know, have them stay the same as the fire department has been doing it. I think that the, uh I think it's fine that way because they choose who their officers are, they vote on it and everything, and we need to know about it also as a governing board. Yeah, once they get selected, we, we have the council and let us know who. We have to know. The council, whoever is up here, has to know. Yeah, we don't have no, we don't have no problem with sending, once we all get elected, giving y'all an update of this, look, these are the officers that were elected, these are the positions that they're going to be holding, and that way at least y'all know. All that falls all under that. communication. Communicate. Yeah, I, I don't. Th I don't think. My personal opinion. I don't think council needs to approve their selection of officers. Um, if you know, I'm not a firefighter, so you know, if they amongst themselves vote for who they want as president, vice president, what have you. I mean, just having it in a report would be nice, but I don't think. It should be approved by council. It doesn't, it doesn't say approved. It doesn't say, yeah. Well, what's this determined? Well, from time consent. to time determined. Yeah. Advice and consent of the city council, which is, it's more that's a normal important. procedure. Yeah. You know, that the city council is the governing board, which supplies all the stuff, you know, that, that the fire department has. So. Yeah, so see, it's, it's like language like that than what we were asking. I agree with James. I don't think it's necessary for the council to approve. They, if it's stop broke, don't fix it. This has worked for more than 100 years. Um, and I think it could introduce some new issues that we may not want to encounter, such as political support of city council members in exchange for you know, approval of fire department positions. So, I, I personally, I'm, I'm fine with it just the way it stands now. And I got on 38-7. We don't do emergency and medical service. We do rescue calls, but that's different from emergency and medical. Um, yeah, so with medical assistance. Assistance. You are first responders, though, right? Yes. Some of your EMTs, EMS calls, EMS calls out for a lift assist as well, so. But that's about it, lift assist, and that's, that goes to EMS mm -hmm. that open us, or even, even the funeral home calls us to help them lift the body up sometimes, uh, or move the body out and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think basic first aid would fall under emergency medical. Ms. Gap, can we change emergency medical services to first aid? Yes. Well, it says assistance. Um, so that's what they're doing. They're assisting with right. emergency medicals. So. Perhaps, uh, let me just read 
Fire Chief, for in his absence, the Assistant Chief or subordinate officer shall have immediate direction and control of the fire department and assistance with first aid. Would that work, John? Mm -hmm. But if they, they are asked to help move a body, or that's not considered medical? Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that would be considered um, an emergency medical service, or if it would fall under that. Uh, I, I guess if you all have not been certified or been classifying it that way in the past, we might want to keep it as first aid services listed that way in the ordinance. I just don't want anybody to get confused with the role of an EMT. No, I don't want anybody to see you as EMT. I don't want to send out EMT or not EMT. Yeah. 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 But I don't want the fire department to be put in a fire situation where they can't assist. The VMS needs them, they're, they're there for them. Yeah, but if we and make an assistance and they can't yeah. do it, then they, so they're, they're they, they can't do it. Do it. Yeah. And they so have to be so held to it. Would be good to just put assist, assist. in emergency medical services assist. and just yeah. keep it the same, but, but add in assist? Yes. Yeah. In case we're called that, upon. That, that, that way, if you're called yeah. upon, you, you're not questioning whether or not you have the right to be there. Yeah. You just know that you can do, the, do what they're asking you to do and do it and leave. Yeah. When they're doing that, they're basically there for traffic control. That's help. right. Yeah. You know, there's there's EMS control, traffic control, control and the reps. Trucks, they, there we go. Yeah, so that people can see them from a distance. Y'all do CPR? Yes. Y'all do CPR? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, CPR. Sure. Okay. Hi. I have another question on 38-5 membership. Uh, all right. Are all the officers already certified under um, or having participated in a firefighter certification program administered under either 419.071 of the Texas Government Code by the State Firemen's and Fire Marshals Association of Texas or by the National Wildlife Coordinating Group? There's only two of us that went to school for the SFMA and everybody else had went to TEKS taken uh, teach courses throughout the years. Huh? Well, do they still have that uh, at College Station, the yes, fireman school? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And every year, every summer, we usually send a couple of people over there just to at least get some kind of training in. Um, and, and, but that's so another like, thing too is that that's that's part of the training facility in Carn City is we're supposed to be able to uh, start being able to get certified. Uh, they do have some of their officers that uh, can sign off on some of that TEAK stuff, right? Yeah, um, yeah so they, they have instructors. Yeah, yeah so they, they do have instructors. And eventually, that's what we want to try to do is move into that type of program. But, uh, not everybody can make it to TEAKs. Not everybody can make it certain weekends. But eventually, Carn City, uh, so before COVID, that's, that was the plan. We had actually had a couple of classes going, but they had uh, some guys going. And then, Here's my concern. If we leave this the way it is, it says all members shall. shall. Which means we're going to lose our fire department if you haven't. So definitely, you know, that's another provision that I added going off of just provisions of state law. I mean, the ways that um, the department can acquire state funding as a volunteer fire department. But if it's not the case, we can, you know, change that as well. That's all up for amendment. Because we can put something like in-house training with the uh, possible, uh, not possibility, but like you know, the future, you know, to add in uh, to gain, you know, some of these certifications. I, mean, I, th I think something. it's great. Uh, I mean, my next question would be, who's paying for it? Is this do we put it in the city's budget will there, under the training budget for them? Yeah, we sure. would. Because yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a good place to. If it benefits to get to, we should pay for it. But if we leave it the way it is right now, it means mandatory. Well, it means mandatory. We do have a budget. In the budget, there is a deal for, for training. It's always been there. We've always used it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, on that too, on the training, though, it's always been there. We've always used it. Yes, sir. Yeah, on that too, on the training, though, yeah, dude, like, if there's also, like, we can throw a class here, like, on a regular Monday. We can actually have like, a class here. And as long as we have an instructor, uh, which, you know, some of us were going to go for that. And a what they call a coordinator, 
sign off on it, uh, that actually goes towards your credentials or hours of the SFMA, the program that you're talking about. Um, and that's yeah, kind of something we had started before COVID hit. We actually got a, we had a lady, her name was uh, Mallory. She was kind of in charge of that side, or was going to be in charge of that side. And like anything we had, any class, even if we do just like a basic ladder training, that goes towards that credit. As long as you kind of follow their guidelines, which we have the book, we've been kind of following their guidelines, that all counts towards you know credits and, and being certified in training. Um, now we have gone to teach, and like they said, there is uh, also classes around here, Carn City, uh, Beeville, Skidmore, I mean not Skidmore, uh, Stockdale, um, which we have, and there is there is a budget line item for training. But we've also in the past, we've sent people to teach, and as long as they pass and come back with a certificate, we've actually applied for it, uh, I think it's an HB 2604 grant, um, through the uh, Texas Forest Service, and we got that back. And so what, what happens is the, the city will write a PO for the whoever's going to that class. Once they come back and we get their certificates in the mail, we apply for that grant and we get it back and it goes right back into the general fund or city account or whatever you want to call it as far as to kind of replace that, you know. So but are those just training classes or is it an actual certification program? So if you go through TEKS, it's actually that the, they offer it twice out of the whole year, but it's only a one week course. So that one kind of takes a little longer because you got to do like they, what they call phases. I think they changed the name, but they used to be called phase one, phase two, phase three, you can test for firefighter one, and in phase four and five, you can t test for firefighter two. So there's different phases, but I think now they changed it and they kind of all combined it, but it's like that's kind of a little bit longer process because you have to go, like I said, yearly. You know, and it's kind of right. hard for people to take off a whole week of work to go do that. Uh, you know, so that's why, like they were saying, the training is laid down here, they have some instructors and they actually have a coordinator that can sign off on stuff like that. So as long as we're doing stuff here, on, you know, on Mondays or on the weekends or whenever we get a chance to kind of put something together, that does apply to that. It's like going to teach. So it's like a modified training. Yes, yeah, so yeah. So you know, and it's where you attend, you reach a certain point, they're like, okay, here, now you're certified. Well, then you got, yeah, then you got to go test. But as long as you got somebody sign off on your hours or your credentials, then you can go test and challenge whichever, you know, one you have enough hours for. How many officers, uh, not officers, how many firefighters do y'all have that are not currently certified the under any of these programs? We got two that are certified. All but two. All but two. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, started. that's my concern is yeah. that we leave the language the way it is. All but two We don't have two firefighters. All but two that, That's the problem that we had started here not that long ago. Well, I, I was trying to push it for that and I came in to chief. And we do have these other guys that have gone. Uh, you know, yeah, we've got a bunch of them that have, just haven't tested. I, th I mean, I think it's a great goal to shoot for. And it, I mean, so we just I'm, need I'm to so just just to support what they're doing instead of this here because this wording doesn't allow them to do what they're doing it actually shuts them down so we need that wording to be changed so that it would reflect the training that they're doing the programs that they're running and working towards certifications instead of all members of the volunteer fire department shall be um, Participate in the firefighter circulator yes. program administrator. Can you put in there if possible can participate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 On Mondays, or get certified during, uh, on the weekend here you know, in Carnage City. You can't travel yeah. you know, 300 miles to go get on a weekend, but you can go five miles. Yeah. There shouldn't be yeah. much of an excuse that you can't go five miles and come back the same night. On and actually, Plus, if I'm not mistaken, because of COVID, they do have a lot of online courses that you yeah. can do and then register with instructors for a coordinate for the hands on yeah. part, for the skills testing part, yeah. and be able to get certified in some of that stuff. Because now a lot of it's online. I wonder how many like firefighters in the county, like between Kennedy, Carn City, Rumney, Fall City. Carn 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 City. Carn
Because I wonder, I mean, if, I mean, I'll reach out to Teeks myself and just ask them if they could coordinate some type of modified training schedule where they came down here they like can. one weekend a month or something. They, they can, as long as you have a certain limit, usually. I mean, I don't know if they can do it once a month, but I'm sure they can do it, you know, at least a couple of times a year. Uh, that might that'd probably be easier. Matter of fact, Chief, well, he's not, he retired already, but Chief Baker from Stockdale. He's with Teeks. He will come down and give us our hand stuff on. Uh, and that's one of the things that we were working on when COVID hit and everything else. Well, the first thing that hit was that we were not in the department. And that stopped things going. Yeah. Now it should be easier. So. so, City Attorney, you can put something together for that item so that it will it will read in a way that will allow our fire department to keep working on the training that they're doing and keep growing their training program so that they can all become certified, but not a absolute. I, currently, I have it listed as all members are encouraged to participate in the firefighter certification program. You know, with the continued sentence. Okay. Is that? What think encouraged you. Yeah. 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 That sounds that's that's better. That way we don't lose none of what we got. Okay. Well, well, that's that's what we've been trying to push. Like we're actually trying to get everybody to at least go get some certification, at least part part one, so that way they at least know the basics of firefighting. Because uh, us, like the ones that have been there the longest, we're not always there. We don't always make every fire. And the ones that just barely join in or have fewer years than us, if they go out and do it themselves, well, at least we know we can depend on them to get the job done. So that, so we're pushing it for ourselves for all our members to go get certified. How many members do y'all have? 28 at 20, this time. 28. And that's all we, that's, that's all the council is trying to do to make sure that we don't approve something that ties your hands. Right. Did y'all have any other questions? Um, when it comes to the approval of the funding for these classes, is it, it going to be you know, easier? Is it communication wise? Well, the chief has the line, has knows what the line item is for the training. He knows what dollars they have for training, and. All he, and once the budget is approved, that line item is approved for spending. Um, I don't see where it would it ever be any of a problem unless you done use up what you have in that line item, and then it's, it takes a budget adjustment that you still would have to get with the chief, and the chief would get with the city manager, and the city manager would get with city council, and they'd make that adjustment as necessary. But well, the only good the other good thing is if we ever get to our city going again, and it's coming. Any training that we do here that gets certified, it's not going to cost us anything. Right. It's going to be part, that's part of the deal that we made when we right. started this thing up. Yeah. That all the training, start getting certified and everything else here in Carnegie City, it, it's not going to cost us anything. So, for an example, there's a uh, rescue training in uh, Wichita in next month. We want to send a couple of guys. I believe it's like 350 per person. On it up there to learn how to use the jaws and all that, how to cut a car up and stuff, to get to somebody when you rest them. On it. And this is part of Tech One uh, certification for uh, for the use for the use of that. But if you come and do it here and get cars and get the guys coming here, it's not going to cost us anything here. Now it's going to be open for everybody out, but anybody out of the county, they will. It's going to be a charge, and that's kind of money that we're going to use to go back into the facility. Which is good. That's real good. And eventually, so eventually, that will be back up and running. COVID is, COVID is here, and, we're, and everybody is learning how to adjust and work through it. Because uh, depending on COVID and how it goes, hopefully we'll have a grand opening in the month. Just depends. It's not over. But that's good. Awesome. Again. Any other concerns? What do we have now for the bylaws part on 3810? What do we have? Do we have to come down on 
about two weeks ago, we sent out a message as a city to request for the bylaws so we can have them here. We're hoping to approve them in April. Do y'all have them on y'all by some chance? We have a copy of the bylaws, but it's not in But I would like to know where you're getting your information on where the bylaws need to be approved by city council or or being signed by a public order. I'm not reading that at 3810. Ms. Gadd, uh, as written, would the council require be required to approve the bylaws? I, or I or it can they do it on their own? You know, I think as written, it's something that the bylaws just have to be in existence and not conflict with anything. You know, that it's just like has what, we, what we, but the organization just abides by, right? Yes. Correct, but not be in conflict with any kind of city policies or ordinances. Uh, that's how I, I have it written more or less. Yeah, there's, there's nothing in here that says we have to approve your bylaws. It can be approved. If it's just for our, our for the organization to abide by, then why, why we would we? the city would should have a copy of your bylaws, no, but no, not no, not to approval. But this yeah, doesn't no, say anything no, about the, the city approval. Well, we were that's told that our bylaws weren't in existence. Yeah, on March's meeting. The city manager stood up there and repeated it three times that he doesn't understand how we adopted bylaws when we didn't have no bylaws because they needed to be approved by city council. Now, that's why I'm bringing it up. If it, if it doesn't need to be approved, then why do we need to talk about our bylaws? It's just the bylaws that our organization abides by. Well, well, as it stands, we're... A guidance, the rules that we follow by. As it stands, we're operating without an ordinance, and that's what opens up all this gray area. So that's what we're here to tonight to accomplish is to get these items ironed out and in writing so that there's no confusion. Yeah, I don't know handing, yes, sir. Handing. What? Go Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <clears throat> what it boils down to is this the city council approves all the bylaws of every extension of the city. Okay, the 4B, the Parks and Rec Board, P and Z. Anybody who writes a bylaw, they approve it. What they're approving is just like what Miss Gad said to make sure that your bylaws don't conflict with anything in city ordinance or anything. That's all they're doing. So you write your bylaws, you bring them to the city council, city council goes over them, we make sure that everything's in alignment and doesn't run afoul of anything we already have in the city in an ordinance, all that, and then they just approve them. It's not they're approving your bylaws saying, well, we don't like section 1.2.3, you have to change that. It's we want to make sure that everything is in alignment with everything else. Yes. And that's really all it boils down to. Yes. So because that's you guys are not yeah. you guys it's right there this one this one says it's understandable. Yeah. You know, but the way that they're presented to us, you've got to understand, I mean tell right. us that y'all we have to do this instead of saying, Hey, we we gotta work with y'all this and that's completely different. But at the end of the day the city council, whoever it is sitting up here, is responsible for all the departments in the city of Canada. Everyone. At the There's end of the one. day. That's not telling you, hey, you need to change fire, this bylaw, you need to change that bylaw. It, it's just that well, if, if, if it goes to court, the city of Kennedy is in court. That's right. For whatever that's department that's they have. That's understandable. Yes. But y'all explain it to us mm -hmm. in simple terms. So that's right, using all these lawyers. Unfortunately, the law requires us to use That's those true. terms. We don't get to. Well, I can, we don't like these. I we don't like it, these terms. I understand either. it, but I mean, you know, if you're the person that you're gonna try to sue just for any little thing, it's fine. But I'm not that way. If you explain to me something, I'm more than glad to do it. But if you start throwing it, oh, uh, you know, it's a law here and it's a law there. And I don't know, a lawyer and chief, y'all lawyer was never gonna back us up because we're not part of the city. So, well, you are now. Was, after after, that, that was, after that was, this is done, that was, that was, you'll be part of the city. That was in the past, but I mean, if they would have sat down with us at the beginning, just like we're doing now, Big part of the city. taken care of two years ago. We've had some communication issues, yeah. and, yeah. and that's what we're here tonight so, to that, clear up. Yeah. Here, here's my question. Uh, 3810 doesn't state that council approves bylaws or has to approve bylaws. I mean, it just basically says that 
the way I interpret this is if you have them, um, they're subordinate to city ordinances and resolutions. And in the event of a conflict, city ordinances and resolutions shall prevail. Yes. And that's what it says. But in yeah, order so for them to know that their bylaws don't conflict that, somebody at the city has got to look it over. The attorney's got to look it over. Somebody's got to look it over because they're not privy to all the laws and rules and, and all the uh, things that needs to be taken into account of that. The whole reason we have an attorney. So does it, it doesn't need to be approved by city council, just by the lawyer? So yeah, it doesn't even, it doesn't, like I said, nowhere in here does it say we're going to approve it. It just says that the city has to be aware of it and make sure that it doesn't conflict with anything else. Well, I have a copy of it right here. Like I said, um, that's, that right there is exactly what you're saying is understandable. I don't have a problem with that. See, I'm like I'm like you guys. I like I, I don't like I don't like legal conversation. And the attorneys will tell you every attorney we've had. I you know I, I like to have a conversation with them because I want them to understand that we are not legal people. We want to understand in plain English terms, black and white. That's the only way we can do it because I don't have the knowledge to to I don't have that knowledge. But I do have enough knowledge to, to apply common sense and life to arrive at a, at, a, at a position that we all can come into an agreement. Exactly. I agree with you. One, one little question here. You adopted the bylaws before council passed the ordinance. Okay? That can't happen because you weren't established. Okay? Are you all going to be okay if the city attorney recommends you change the date of your bylaws, not the content necessarily, but the date to after when the ordinance was established so everything's paper trail is in line? We can. The date on there is when, the date that we put on there is when we got certified by the Secretary of State of being an organization. And okay. since we did that, that's the only reason why we adopted those bylaws, because as being an organization, you got to have something to abide by, and that's the reason why we have that date. Okay. So can that date stay, or do we need to change it to be? I think it would be, you know, what I could do is reference that that was the date acknowledged by the Secretary of State, yes. that, you know, this is the date and that we're doing it the date that by have. ordinance. Yes. Okay. Anything else? See, this is why I like workshop. Because we don't have to have motions, we don't have to have yeah. none of that stuff that we can just talk. <laughs> I can get people to do workshop. I've been I think we should have a workshop every month for some. Because that's the way you can talk about it and learn and find out what the challenges is. Because I don't know what your, I mean, I know some of y'all challenges. Y'all came to my house and sat out in my yard and told me about it, which that's okay. But workshops allows us to have a conversation and not have to be so tied to the legality of how it's supposed to go. Once we're in a council meeting, it is cut and dry. That's the rules, that's the way it's gotta be. If you, if you deviate from those rules, there's a lot of people that are watching and would love to see us mess up. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions or discussions for the council? I've got, I've got one question. Yes, sir. And Mr. Lynn never wants to talk about it in the city council meeting, which is, now I understand why. But, Chief Strzok. No. No. That's what we're going to put in here. It's like I told the council, we all want it in writing. If you get a chief truck and the type of equipment that it's supposed to be decked out with, I want it in writing. That way there's never a question about the chief truck. Right now the chief truck is just a glorified pickup truck. It doesn't have anything in it, any equipment in it. It never had any equipment in it. I looked at it. I didn't even see your bunker gear in it. Okay. Well, I took it out until we bring it put it here. So, but I did tell so the did council, have, I, I, did, I do want it in writing. They did have SCBA in there. But again, so, that'd be nice to know that, okay, we have to have it. Mr. Lynn, you're referencing section 38-8 under duties general? No, 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 I'm not, actually. What I'm looking at here is this agre the agreement that Mr. Salas passed out. This agreement is like the perfect document 
to incorporate the chief's truck into it. It, 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 it is an agreement between the city of Kennedy and the Kennedy Volunteer Fire Department. Has that been referred to as a contract at previous meetings, or it's an agreement? It, an agreement, a contract, it's relatively the same Maybe terminology, okay. yes, sir. And I would say that that is where, that is the place to put it. And it's like I've said numerous times, I want, to see, I want it in writing for the future, for the chief and for the fire department, so there's never any question going forward. But I will, I will help you understand one of the challenges on the truck situation. If you are not an established fire department, and you're driving that truck, and you have an accident and kill somebody, the city's not on the hook for you. It goes to you because you're not covered by the city. So should that have gone with any of the fire trucks? That, that, that goes with everything out there right now. That's why it's so important so to like have the documentation. To it, so right, you were not. With this and this and that, we don't have the fire department. We can't go with any call right now. You I mean, what would you recommend? I mean, what, yeah, what are you recommending on that part? That's, that's why we're for a workshop in it, right? Because that's right. That's we why we're this. doing this so that you are protected, the city is protected, and everything is on paper like it's supposed to be. But Number one, we didn't. I didn't realize that you guys were operating without that until it was brought to our attention. None of us. None of us realized that until it was brought to our attention. Well, we and then we start right. And then we start working on what we need to do so that we can make an informed decision. And that's how all the stuff came up about the other options for fire departments. Because as a rule, we want all the information so we can make a good decision. And unfortunately, he's the head. He's the guy that's going to go find all the information got to go put it all together, and got to present it to us. And he's the one to get accused of doing stuff anyway. But that's his job, to get that information for us, the city council, so we can make an informed decision. So we don't have the time nor the tenacity to go out and find all that information. That's why we have a city manager. Okay, so I have a question with that. Thing. So, like, we, we went through this issue before. So, like, when they told us, hey, you're not, uh, there's no contract, you're established, you know, you're not covered. Basically, it was used, all this equipment that the city gave was at our own risk, you know? So, but then later on they said, hey, no, with, um, was it TML? Is that, that the answer? TML. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then somebody said, with TML, you have to have a fire service in your city. So everything that's used for the fire equipment and everybody who uses it is covered. So that, I mean that's that's what the city manager before told us, and then uh, somebody else was not too sure. But they said as long as TML is insuring you guys through the city, and whoever uses that city equipment is covered under TML, and those trucks are covered. Yes. So that we're not just driving around, and the city's not liable. Well, the good news so, is now that this ordinance is in place, right. uh, everything of course, is like so, I mean, the city. Said. Since March the 9th, that's not an issue anymore. Okay, okay. so now you're a member of the fire department, so you should be covered by our vehicles that are assigned to that department. Yes. Okay, so, so we go back to common sense, you know. Well, okay, and, and, yeah, so but what he's saying is like still, without having that part into the vehicle, like it's still putting hindrance on us for the chief truck staying there. As far as I'm concerned, you should get the truck already. Take it home tonight. Right. And get, it, get it right away. I mean, that, I mean that, but the biggest thing, that was what we were asking for. Quick we question. To figure it out. I, 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 Do we I need to have a separate workshop to have We will out? have to have a separate workshop for the actual agreement, yes. Okay. But you said take it home tonight, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, because you, the, you chief's are, truck so is covered, covered, right? the chief's truck is covered by our insurance, always was when we, when we took ownership, okay? Yes. What Councilor Wynn was saying was if Chief Brian was driving it, prior to March 9th and something happened, anything beyond him. It's kind of like a personal vehicle. I can insure my truck all day long, but if my son isn't on my insurance and he has a wreck, my insurance isn't going to pay for my son. Yeah. But as of March 9th, none of this matters. Okay. It's, it, but, everything's been taken care of. That's not the way it was presented. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's one way and now it's... Well, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know who presented it, but... We know who presented it. But the take, is, okay. take the way tonight. Yeah, right now it. it's, it's done. Okay, that's what question we're asking. Yeah. 
Now we also have to read the lines of communication. Yes. Okay. Call him if you have questions. Take his call. <laughs> you know, we've got to keep that open. We have to be able to, you know, work together. I don't mind communicating, no, 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 but, no, 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 but he's got a bad habit of saying, this is the way it is, and that's it, I'm no questions asked. I mean, if that's the way it is, why am I going to call and ask and argue about something that's not going to make a difference? So we're not getting this information. Let's all try to just move yeah. forward from here and and uh, work together. Because I'm all in favor of you having the truck at your home to improve response time. I know how how critical that is in a lot of emergency situations. Well, let me let me ask let me ask a question on that. I and, and this is just a question. So if you have if the truck is at your house and you're at work, do you drive the truck to work? The only time I'd rather talk work to work is say I was at the house at lunchtime uh, and we had a call. Uh, sometimes I go just right. because that. Uh, but but my here's my question. And then if I'm running late from the from from the call, mm -hmm. say I leave at twelve, I gotta be back at one. I get I make a call, but I'm not back till eleven till uh, one thirty. I'll drive that truck to park it there. I don't use it for anything else, and then I just go home. Right. Well, here's my question. You're on the job. And your personal vehicle, you're at your place of employment. Yes. You get a call. Your employer is going to let you go to well, go answer the call. Mm -hmm. Then you got to go home to get the truck. Are you coming? I, I'm. Everybody was. Everybody was saying it makes response time better, but I don't understand that. If the truck is not with you, it's adding time. Okay. Well, two thirds of his day he's at home. Is that correct? Well, yeah, Sixteen hours a day he's at home. I mean, I don't just because it's. A, Cheese truck and this and that. I don't take it everywhere and just go all over the place. I mean, right. I understand. Even, even when I go and, and inspect a, uh, we get a fire permit, a burn permit to go visit. If it's on the neighborhood where I'm at at work, I'll just take my own truck. If I, but if it's across town or something, I sometimes about the house and I got to do that. I'll jump in the, in the cheese truck and I'll take it. But I don't use it for everything. Right. But if I get a call in the middle of the night, and there's sometimes that it's some. So many hotels there get an alarm going off. There's no fire going up and the alarm going off. They'll still call me to go and check it out. Okay, so I have to come all the way over here and get the truck in the middle of the night. Instead of going straight over there, taking care of it, and home back in five minutes, ten minutes, and go back to bed. No, I now want you to be I, an hour. I, I, I want you to have the truck. Don't misunderstand me. But I also want we we're we're talking we're talking clarity here. Yeah. So we want to. I want to be clear. I want to understand. You know, everybody's saying well, that's delaying his, the response time, but it's not going to be a one hundred percent all the time. I mean, it's volunteer deal. That's right. It's not, it's another not another thing to consider, Leslie, is correct me if I'm wrong, Chief. But most fire emergencies don't happen Monday through Friday, eight to five. They're generally in the evening hours, or early morning hours. Oh, I, I, I agree with all of that. I'm not. I'm not disputing anything. Of going straight to the fire department, you have to go home and get the truck. That's exactly what I'm saying. He's going straight to the fire station. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the question that he's asking. Yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was my entire question. Yeah. If you're at your workplace, and that was what I said, if you're yeah. at but, your workplace. So, yeah, but, but I don't leave during, during working hours 90% of the time. Someone else had a question. I don't leave at work at the time. So like if you I get said, a fire call and you're at work, you you don't I, you don't, I don't answer leave that. unless there's nothing going on and the boss is there and I ask it, can I leave? And they're being pretty gentle about letting me go. Okay. Okay. But if I mean if I, for example, I work on vehicles. So if I'm working on your vehicle and you want it in two hours and there's a fire call, I can't leave. Now if I'm waiting for parts and I can't have to do nothing with it and I'm just standing there filling my thumbs. We get a fire call. I'll ask, hey, can I go for this fire call? And they'll tell me yes or no. Depends on the circumstances. Yes. But most of the time, the ones that I've been going to since I've been here in town is that I'm, I go home and eat lunch now. So I'm sitting there on my couch eating my lunch and the paper goes off. Well, now I've got to come all the way over here, make the fire, and then, like I said, if the fire takes two hours, I'll call in and say, hey, I'm going to be late, or I'll leave early, however it goes. And then from there, I'll just, when I have the truck, I'll take it and park it there. 
if we get a call in the afternoon, like sometimes we get a lot of calls around 5 o'clock, 5.30, I mean, I'll can jump, if I have it there, I'll jump with it and take, take off straight to the fire. If not, I'll go to the house. But it's not, it's not going to be that every call I'm going to be there before everybody else. It's like everything else. I mean, I well, want to make I, every call. I understand that completely. You guys are, you guys are volunteers, but the truck has been such a point of conversation. Well, again, the reason and that I was told the reason the truck was here wasn't nothing that had to do with the insurance, had nothing to do with it, because I didn't make 100% of the cost. That's what I was told. Wow. Okay? As, as That's not as a good enough reason for me. I, I, I agree with so you. So now you're going to understand why there's kind of a yeah, few so of us. more, more, more yeah. on that. It feels and, like, and okay. that's, the, that's the key thing about workshop. You can get a whole lot more information because we can talk back and forth and find out what the challenge is. That's why I keep asking the question, is there anything else? Because when you guys leave here tonight and this deal is adopted, all I want to hear is happy things. Yes. I don't want to hear about what's on Facebook. I don't want to, I want our city to start looking good Amen. instead of looking like a bunch of small children. Yes. Sorry, I, but that's just the truth. I don't do Facebook, so I just I just have people pull me aside. People just like to talk to me. And so if it doesn't make Kennedy look good, it doesn't matter how upset you are, you shouldn't put it on Facebook. You need to talk to whoever you need to talk to to try to arrive as a re at a resolution. Facebook is not a place for it. Well, I don't have Facebook either. Smart man. <laughs> Take the truck, Juan. Yeah, take the truck. Take the truck, Juan. Yes, sir. So on the truck, just to clarify, I mean, would y'all be opposed to, like Carn City, for instance, they use it, he has it as long as he's in town everywhere, you know, he goes to eat, goes to do this. I mean, kind of what Leslie was asking for response time or questioning that, I mean, could he take it to work and have it all day that way? He could respond if they let him go instead of having to take those extra three minutes or work. I mean, because that was another reason it was never taken. Because I don't think it was really clarified that can you. When we do, when we do, when we do the, agree, when we do the agreement, agreement. let's look at that. That'll be specified because, in the agreement. Yeah, because we, there's there, and that that is a that is a valid point because that's another thing that I was thinking. You know, if he is got the truck and he's at work, he get a call and he leaves, it's it's all good. But if he don't got the truck and there's something on the truck that he's gonna need for that call, he's still got to go get it. To answer the call. It's the reason the reason you're the fire chief is because you're trustworthy. So I, I think that we can trust you with that truck. Yeah, so when we do the agreement, we can put it in the agreement that you operate the truck 95% of the time that you're driving. Yeah. You don't yes, live on the town. That would make more sense. Yeah. yeah. That would make more sense. Because we've always had a question like, can, can you take it to work? Can you take right. it to Walmart if you need? Because if you get a call, do you use it for Walmart? So, Right across the street, you know, it benefits that the truck's in your hands. Right. But I mean, when I when I worked for Alamo, their rule was, as a store manager, you didn't get to decide whether you drove your vehicle. You drove the truck. Yeah. That's it. Well, and the reason they did that is because they knew they had enough insurance on it if you were in an accident to cover them and you. Well, well, but I don't take it everywhere. Cause yeah, but consider this, okay? It's just like a police vehicle. Yeah. Okay? So you take your truck, you go to work, you get off work, and you go to Walmart and pick up some groceries for the house, but you're in the fire chief's truck. Something happens at, at Walmart, you're there, you're on the spot, you're there. If you have the proper equipment in your truck, you have equipment to respond right then and there, and you're expected. You are expected to respond on behalf of the fire department because you're there in the chief's truck. Yes. Okay, just like a policeman, if he's on his way home, stops at Walmart, and somebody goes to rob checker number 13, he's expected to neutralize the situation. Okay? That's why we let you do that. And so I think that it would be expected for you to take it. I think in the agreement, what we need to quantify in the agreement is that you can't take it out of the city limits except for when you're responding to a call. Okay? That way you can take it to Rungi or you can take it to Falls City. Or you can take it to Three Rivers if you're responding to a call, but that way it precludes you from taking it to SeaWorld to take your, your family on a, a trip. I mean, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, that's why, and that's why 
That's why the agreement we wanted, I want it in writing. It protects you actually at the end of the day because if we, we put it in writing. Council members, hey, I saw a truck over here. Exactly. You know what yeah. And that's what we got to answer for. You know that hey, we saw a city of Kennedy truck in 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 Dallas. What's it doing in Dallas? Oh, you know? And I don't know what's it doing in Dallas. I've already been down that road with the police car in my house. Yeah. But again, you know, that was explained. That was explained to us. I thought it was said, okay, fine. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. It was just the way it was said to us. I want to ask for his communication. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're asking for his communication. We're all asking for his communication. All communication, open lines. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And, and like I say, the communication can't happen at the city council meeting because city council meeting it has a set line item agenda we can't alter it or change it we can't talk about anything other than what's on that paper and that's why some yeah and that's why that's why you know you find us sometimes trying to shut stuff down because it's not on the agenda and we have to stay within that agenda but a workshop is Exactly that. It's a workshop so we can learn how to work better together. Yes. I have pushed for workshops ever since I've been on city council, and I haven't had people that wanted to do workshops because they thought it was a waste of time. I disagree. I think if you want clear communication, you have to have workshops. Yes. Also, know. workshops are single topic, so it allows more time for conversation and discussion, whereas a a regular council meeting sometimes has 20 to 30 agenda items that need to be addressed within a very limited time frame. So I agree with Leslie. I think workshops are a great way to address this. Do we have email addresses set up, you know, like for the fire department, like fire chief at yeah. cityofkennedy.org? Not yet. Okay, that's something I want to I want to move to, and I want to do it completely generic, like I've tried to in city right. hall and with the council going generic, getting our names out of stuff. That way, as people succeed us, they you have, have action. Yeah, you right, don't have to change right, it. Yeah. So, but that is something I am working towards. So, you're, the short answer is today, no, we don't. In the future, will we? That's that's my goal. Okay, because that I mean that'd be, I think, very helpful, um, especially you know communication between the fire department and you preparing for a meeting or, um, you know, but I think it'd make it a lot easier. Communication-wise, but we do pay for a cell phone for the fire chief. Any other questions or discussion? Who's got? Who's got? Got a question for you? With these new bylaws, the before there was before the department was established as volunteer do the other ones still hold anything after they were told that they were suspended a few months back or you know i have to kind of look into the history of the bylaws as well as read them yeah. um, because it's been a Council need to approve the ordinance before we have the workshop for the agreement? No. You all adopted the ordinance at the meeting as amended. So once you, once the attorney makes the amend, amending changes, you'll sign it and we'll be done. Okay. So yeah, we're 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 good. 
on that. After she gives us a don't forget the delete in your server. Back over to make sure everything's kind of what we talked about before y'all sign it, or y'all just get to sign it. I can I can do that when when the attorney gives me the amended ordinance before I call the mayor and have him come sign it. I'll email it to Chief Juan again, and you know y'all can look it over. I'll give y'all a couple of days to look it over. And then, if everything you know is okay, then I'll call the mayor to come sign. Okay, is that fair enough? Idea. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. I, and I think, in, in answer to your question about that, I think we can. I'll make that a line item uh, on the agenda for this month, and we can set the workshop Schedule date. Schedule the workshop. Right. That way, we're doing it at a council meeting. I, I do have one more question. Yes, sir. With the ordinance, because that's uh, just see how it reads. Uh, so. It says if any officers, members, or employees of the department. Okay, where is that at? Uh, I'm sorry, 38A. Which says general duties. It's, 38A? Yeah, it's just a little eight. bit. 38A. 38A. Okay. Uh, eight. 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 What page? It's page 205. Two five. It's the bottom. Uh, about five sentences down. Start if any officer, member, or employee of the department it are suspended for violations of such rules and regulations, the fire chief shall, in writing, advise the city manager of same and the reason thereof. The fire chief shall be responsible for main for main maintenance. That, that's that's the only part. That's the only part that I have a question. So, like, is that just a writing form, like? That we're just notified. It's a written, that we're written, that we're written, written, a written documentation of what happened, why the suspension happened, and it goes to the city manager. But and that's, that's not for like approval or anything, right? No, no, that's, no, no that's just so. You just to yeah. Us? yeah, that's just to yeah. cover you okay. because legally, if a person, say if you had that happen and a person wanted to um, take legal action to, to go against it, you need to have documentation showing what happened and the city is the one that's going to have to represent you and the city is the one that should have that documentation so that they don't have to track you down to get that documentation. Oh. That's why I come from the chief. Yeah. He's right. reporting. Yeah, yeah no, that's, all, that's all I was questioning is to make sure it's like, is if, you know, on our side with, with our bylaws, everything that we approve it and all we're doing is informing them. That somebody got suspended. Or right. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. all I was questioning is right. if there are, if it had to go through certain chapters. For that to be approved, I believe it's probably certain practical considerations where it's useful for the city manager to have that information. For example, the identification card probably has an expiration date, so he's going to need a current list of active members, so that if somebody comes to him to renew the card and they're not a member anymore, then, then he'll be aware of that. Yes. And so that helps, like if somebody's going and charging stuff, so they're not in the fire department anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think they can still have a card. Plus, then I can tell the council what's going on so that on days when you're not around or I'm not around or one of the councilors or the mayor is around and they see this individual doing stuff and they're not supposed to be, they know that person's not supposed to be doing it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that's what I said. I just wanted to, like I said, just reading. I just want to make yes, sure. Yes, sir. So we have our own machine to do our identification cards. Could we still do that or we have to go through y'all or could we just do them ourselves and get y'all a list? I would, I would probably say, you know, if the council's okay with it, I'm personally okay with it. As long as you give me an updated list, maybe with a, I don't know what you can do so I can have a picture with a name type thing. Yes. I would be fine with that. And as long as you're communicating to me who's no longer there, I can cross them well, off the list. What identification cards do y'all have? I mean, like, do you? Do you have we just have cards? business cards. Yeah. Just business cards? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, for so now. Not, not full identification. Cards. Yeah, for now. Okay. okay, so like that's what ours was. We, ours was given to us so we can actually make the card. At the sheriff's office, we carry a badge. Yeah. And we okay. leave the sheriff's office, they take the badge home. It's a, it's a little badge that we carry. It hangs on our chest. We have to wear that all day long. My employment ends there, i got to turn it into the sheriff. Yeah, and take it with me. What we were working with here. And, and we do get a badge too. Like, so we have badge. I, I said badge, but it's a card it's hanging on, a, you know, one of those things. Nice. Yeah, this is yeah, this that's is pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah.
This is absolutely, this is perfect. <laughs> and that picture. We were told we had to have a, a, a picture ID in case uh, Ashlyn, anything happened in Ashland, we had to have some type of form ID that showed that we Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the businesses so. are going to require, I mean, you come there and tell them you're there to fight the fire, but, you know, they, they have, especially in an area where it's a sensitive situation, they don't want to know that you are who you say you are. So this, this is perfect. And that picture is small enough, like I was saying, if you have like... Put it on the sheet. Yeah, you can put that picture right beside it so I can even... It'll help me know everybody's name too, you know. Any other questions or discussion? So for the agreement, are we going to have to set a date today for bringing it back up? We'll do that at the council we'll meeting. We'll do that at the council meeting. We'll set another workshop date for the agreement. That's something that goes, you will work on, yeah. like budget time. But like I said before, I mean, other departments do it. I know everything else. That I like to have a committee. You know, even if I'm not on the committee, I just approve. In other words, if I've got four or five guys in the department that pick out specs of trucks out, uh, and bring it to me, and then I'll bring it to you. Yeah. Or we can sit. You can sit with the five guys or four guys as a committee. Yeah, you can uh, do that. And. But, and just to tell you, since you're talking about it, you have 150000 in that line item right now. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, if you needed a truck and it's less than one hundred fifty, it's already been approved by the council to purchase a new vehicle. Uh, we just well, need to figure out what it is and take a look at it. Well, six, well the one we call 608, I'm sure they don't want to get rid of it. It's uh, a 96, 2? No, it's a 91. 91. Okay, I don't know the truck numbers. Uh, uh, so We got okay. two pumpers and two brass trucks. All right. On it. So you need another pumper? Well, it's a 90, 91 mile. Okay. And it's about, you know, yes. out of, out of more years more to maintain than And of course, it's going to need a lot of yeah. valves, it's going to need new work, something like that. Before I go and spend $50,000 preparing it, <laughs> right. Well, why don't you do what you were talking about? Get a few guys together, go out and look at some pumper trucks or what have you. And get some fact sheets with some prices in that, and we can sit down and chat about it. I mean, you know, I told you from day one, I'm here to get you whatever you need. So we'll, we'll see too. You get what you need to take care of the residents of Kennedy. But I have no have problem with that. Yeah. Line item for a truck. How much yeah, is it? Supposed to be for the pumper. How much was it? The truck they're looking at. How much? Eighty-five thousand. Oh, no, we, we, no, we, we have to have. Yeah, they have. I mean, since we were. And let's just bring it up now that, no, 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 now that we are truck numbers. This is uh, just a, no, 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 giving the council a hard time. It's a 20 year old truck, is that correct, Chief? Yes. Yeah, I think it's easy. It's probably past 30 year old truck. 91. 91. 30 year old truck. Yeah, my math was off. It's probably past due for replacing between now and September 30th. They have a little bit of time. You can spend that money. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? Is there anything else that you wanted to look at or talk about in, in, in respect to the fire department that we can cover right now? Uh, like I said, when we leave tonight, I really want everybody to be on the same page, and I want everybody to be happy with what they accomplished. And I want Kennedy to be happy. I mean, I, I, like I say, I'm not a Facebook person, but I've heard some horrible stories about what's on Facebook and what people are saying. And we're trying to get people to come to this community and get businesses to come to this community. And unfortunately, they look at that stuff. And they decide, well, we're going to pass on this and this time. And it's not because we don't have everything to offer. It's because some of the things that are out there on the on the social media, a lot of pe a lot of companies make decisions now based on social media. 
So I would encourage all of you to try to try to try to paint everything in a positive light and the things that you can't discuss it with whoever you need to discuss it with so that you can have it come to a positive light and keep lifting Kennedy up instead of knocking it down because oil is going to run out yeah. and we need some other industries in this area and we need them pretty quick so they can get established and 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 it can help us and your children to have something to fall back on. Um, because at the end of the day, by 2035, the, the, the country, they want it to be all electric. I still ain't figured out how they're going to get the electric without having the oil, but somebody's working on that. But we need industry here. We need to grow our community. And the only way we can do that is it's shown in a positive light. Negatives, I was always told you pass negatives up to your superior and positives you pass to your subordinates and to everyone else. The only person you talk to about a negative is your supervisor and your supervisor's job is to help you get through that. Nobody else, because every time you tell somebody something negative, they're going to tell five more people and they're going to add something to it. But every time you tell somebody something positive, they're going to tell one other person, and that's it. So the negative is going to always outweigh it. But you're in control. So if there's anything else we need to talk about, about the fire department, so you guys can feel good about what you do, because we appreciate what you do. Very much appreciate it. And we are working and trying to find somewhere for you to house what you got. So yes, sir. Uh, on that, oh, I'm sorry. Does the city still own the old dollar store parking lot, or is it? Dog store parking lot. Oh, no, no, we're going to put the convention yeah, center on time. Yeah, yeah, right there off Main Street. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right across from the building. Wait, wait, not the convention center. For what? Yes, Craig Street. Craig Street. We still yes, own that property. We still own that property. So could we maybe discuss building it there? I mean, Making it a staple of the city, you know, if we have access to every which way, why couldn't we build it there? Something that hadn't been considered, but it's worth talking about. Uh, uh, we're 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 to we're to practice we used to practice there. Yeah, what happened? You don't practice there anymore? No, not I since they leveled it out and fixed it up. I thought about it. No, that's a, that's a, <laughs> That's a, that's a good idea. That's a real good idea. And, you know, we have to explore it and find out what the cost would be, find out where we're going to get the money from. But, again, the whole reason to have a workshop is so we can come up with some fresh ideas. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah it's a big enough area. You know, we have access to, you know, 72, 181. You know, we can go with any of the truck we need to go, all the truck road. A lot, of, a lot of probably depends on which direction we go with the convention center because I know that's one of the locations that we're, we're thinking about, but that hadn't been determined at this point. But, right. but it is something to consider while we go through those discussions. Yeah. As someone who does use Facebook, I just want to say you all do an excellent job with your official fire department Facebook page. Uh, I follow it and I look at it frequently and you do a great job of keeping the community informed about safety about your fire responses, that's good for the community. When people see we have an active volunteer fire department that are on the scene in a short amount of time, as we saw during February, I believe it was Sonic had a fire or there was a local restaurant that had a fire, got there quickly, got it taken under control. That, that does, Leslie, that presents us in a very positive light. So I just wanna let you know that I appreciate that. Whoever's managing that page is doing a good job. Thank you. We, we don't want to be superstars, you know, we just want to do our, you know, our duty in health and we're just, we're glad that everybody's on the same page and we're, we're, we're looking forward to becoming done. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Any uh, other? I do, I do have one more question. Yes, sir. Though. So, like we do with the, this Mandy England, where is it, this, her name? What is she in the fire department to us? Because we, we get, uh, Miss England, great, Miss okay. England. She is the city clerk that works there and down at the water place. So, so are we answering to her? You answer to, if you answer to any one individual of the city, 
If you want to look at it like, what individual the city do you answer to? You answer to me. You don't answer to her. She answers to me. She's a clerk. She's a clerk. So she's there to to basically do some clerical things for you guys because we put it in the budget for you guys to pay someone to do that. So we have our own person there doing that. And I split her up between there and somewhere else to maximize her time. Because she doesn't need to be there 40 hours a week for you guys. Okay, we'll take you that there. So if we need something done, we got to go to you first? Or can we go straight to her? You can, depending upon what it is, you can ask her. Yeah, you can go to her and she should take care of it. But if you're not getting anywhere with her, I would expect you to be in my office talking to me. No, sir. Well, Again, you have your chief's phone? Do you have your chief's yes. phone? Yes, I do. Okay, because I've texted you a couple of times, you never replied, so I wasn't sure if you had it because I know Miss Hines was changing it out there at one point well, in time. I, no, well, I was missing it for what, almost two months. But okay. I haven't yeah, there's a long Same time. number. Well, the last time you texted me on something, I called her about it because you said get with her. Okay. Her Same her. number, though, right? Yes. Okay, so then you and I should be good. But yes, on that part. Yeah, you and I should be good then if you, you have the same number. Yeah. Not a boss. No. Not a boss. She 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 is just a clerk. So okay. Somebody might want to talk there. Kind of about that. Yes. I wasn't saying that. It's not the way she presents herself. Then I tell you what, that's a personnel matter, and that's not the subject of tonight. Come see me in my office. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? I do want to say one thing before we go, Mayor. I want to say how much I appreciate what the fire department and the police department did. And I know I'm going back 12 months on this, okay? But 12 months ago, Chief Ash got wind of something and he jumped on it. And the fire department jumped on it during COVID when we were all quarantined. They went around with their vehicles doing birthday things. And that was a very good thing. I just want to say thank you to you guys for jumping on that bandwagon with them and doing that. I know y'all went around doing some of that. I know you didn't do as much as you'd like to, but I do know you did do some, so thank you. And I do know that the school appreciates greatly when the fire department helps us do the escort of the kids for their accomplishments and their sporting activities. It gets told to us quite frequently, you know, how grateful they are that the fire truck show up. The little kids love the fire truck. They do great things, and I know the city tells me, the school tells me all the time. So just making sure that they, they're aware of that. Yeah, excellent role models. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Heroes That's of the community. Good. We appreciate everything you do. Any other questions or discussion? Miss Gad, you got everything? I do, yes. Okay. So I'll look for your modified ordinance whenever you get it done. Excellent. Okay. And I really, really want to thank all of you for coming. Yes. And all of you saying what was on your mind. And I want to encourage all of you to continue the dialogue. This is my last year as a council. Um, come May, somebody else will be in District 5, but I will still be in this community and I will still be involved in this community. I just, government is not my thing. I'm just, I, I'm like y'all, I, I just, it's too much, it's too much stuff that don't make common sense to me, but I will show up for workshops if, if y'all want somebody around to listen and talk and try to help it be clear, because I think it needs to be clear. But I really appreciate y'all showing up tonight, and I really appreciate you saying what you need, what you felt you need to say, and airing out the things we need to air out so that we can have an agreement, have, it a, have something that you guys are comfortable with and you feel good about. Thank you. Because you put your life on the line every time you fight a fire. Every time. That's true, I've seen it firsthand. Um, if there's no further discussion or questions, then I will declare this workshop closed and meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.